DJI goggles Integra. They want you to think it's for integrated battery, it's for integrated remote ID. This is the third time I've sat down to record this rant, and I'm going completely unscripted and not highly produced. This is just going to be me telling you what I think and what I feel. So, firstly, I went through both the DJI Goggles Integra and the DJI Goggles 2 um, pages on DJI with a fine tooth comb to try and put together a comparison video between the two. There's two major differences, three if you include remote ID. Major difference one, price. $499 versus $649. The Integra is $499, Goggles 2, $649. Difference number two, field of view in the screens. Both are 1080p, 100Hz, refresh rate, micro OLED. Integra is 41, 44 degree field of view, 51 degree field of view for the Goggles 2. The integrated battery. The integrated battery is just under 2,500 milliamp hours and you can't remove it. It's integrated into the head strap. The third thing is integrated GPS into the Integra goggles to force compliance to remote ID. You might be thinking, that's not a problem. I'm like you, Darren. I fly real FPV drones and I've got an O3 air unit or a Vista. Well, here's the thing. The whole idea of the GPS in the Integra goggles is so you don't need to connect your goggles to a smartphone to be remote ID compliant. Which, you know, good enough for consumers or good enough for people who want to comply. But the whole point of flying these things is so I get to choose whether I do or don't. And there's been this massive debate about how do we actually enforce remote ID from a hardware perspective. And it seems that the way DJI have decided that they're going to ensure that the products that they sell adhere to the regulations are through the goggles because they can do it on the drones that have GPS they can't do it on things like the O3 air unit because they don't have GPS and they can't probably access the coordinates so they're at least going to get it from the goggles now I understand I understand DJI's position right you are the largest consumer drone company and you sell drones for not only consumers but for business but for enterprise you can't sell to governments anymore um, and you need to adhere to the laws and America is a very litigious uh, country as you probably know most of you live there and it would not be unforeseen for DJI to be in front of the Senate the same way the CEO of TikTok is currently in front of the Senate explaining the internet again to the current lot of senators the same way a few years ago all the CEOs of Facebook Zuckerberg you know and the Google CEOs and all the internet companies were all explaining to this inter to the senators how the internet works and it was hilarious but it's it's foreseeable that at one point in time if DJI weren't going to be forcing this compliance to the regulations through the products itself they'd probably be in front of the Senate as well so I can appreciate their position and also from a liability right if someone decides to break the law and DJI aren't able or aren't actively enforcing those regulations or don't have provisions to enforce those regulations and someone gets hurt and the pilot like me who's flying for fun doesn't have any money and gets sued but can't pay who are they going to sue well we're going to sue the drone company for making a product that caused the injury so if DJI have all of these provisions to basically get to the point where well hang on a tick I as the end user circumvented all of the all of the um, protections that they put in place to prevent it they can't be held liable so I get that from a company perspective I really do but what I don't get is how they're gradually enforcing this on its users so the Avada right we know that's got remote ID we get it and DJI at the time when that all came out and said no the air unit doesn't have remote ID capabilities inside it which is true it doesn't but now they go and release a product which puts the remote ID capabilities in the very things that we wear, the goggles. And you might be thinking, no, that's cool. Well, I've got the goggles V2, discontinued. So if you've got the goggles V2, completely discontinued, which isn't such a bad thing. Um, if you may want to go and get them. But what if you've got the goggles too? It's like, well, they don't have the GPS chip. Well, what's to say in a firmware update, you don't then have to connect your smartphone to the goggles too in order to be compliant with remote ID. 
that's completely possible. And you'd be like, okay, well, I'm just not going to update my gear. Fair enough. If you don't want to update your gear, that's cool. But that also prevents you from buying more gear. So, when you go and buy a new air unit, you have to plug it into your computer to activate it. That then does a handshake with the server and it will tell you the most recent release of firmware. And they may, with air units that don't have the remote ID compliant firmware, force you to update it. And you might be like, okay, well, they're not gonna know my goggles or my other air units. Well, here's the kicker, right? You have to bind your air unit to your goggles. And it's fair to say in that binding process, there's probably a handshake of data, which transmits, I think it's in the goggles, it transmits the version of the firmware that's on here. And it may be in the code that they transmit something that says if you fly, if you have goggles that are of below a certain firmware, you can't use them until you go and update. So then you're forced to update your goggles and then suddenly your goggles too, and maybe it might be the V2s they also do it with as well because they've got the USB out that you then have to go and update your goggles to the remote ID compliant firmware in order to fly your air unit. You might be thinking, oh, that's cool. What about the old ones that aren't? Well, again, they're all, buying, they're all bound in transmitting data. It's fair to say that, again, there could be provisions in the code that says, well, if the air unit's firmware is below a certain thing, you know, it's non-compliant firmware, they won't let you go and fly. And they'll just say, no, you need to update your firmware in your air unit before you can go and fly. So you might be thinking, okay, well, the next step is, surely what about... I just say that I've got, you know, it's it's all connected up and I and I just fly or I do something to circumvent it. Like, how can they actually enforce it? Well, the thing is, if you're flying Express Lores or Crossfire, you can go, well, I can still arm my quad because it's not through the remote control. I can still arm it. But what DJI can do to ensure that they're enforcing you to fly, um, enforcing you to comply to remote ID, is then just not transmit the video. They can go, look, we're not showing the video and show you an error screen. And then you're kind of stuffed. But then, okay, well, what about if you're flying indoors? And you're not gonna get a strong GPS lock indoors. But that's where they might go, oh, no GPS found. They could, depending on remote ID requirements, then say, oh no, well, if you're indoors, we want you to now connect to your smartphone instead. Or you might be flying in indoor mode. So. Could there be hacks where we just make sure the GPS doesn't get reception and then you can't fly indoors? Maybe. But the thing that really annoys me about this is it's this gradual easing you in to more regulation. And I, I get the irony of this being an Australian, right? Because we're like, we love a bit of regulation. We love regulation. Um, just like Japan, regulation. But the thing that annoys me about it is it removes our choice, our freedom to comply. It doesn't remove our freedom of the consequence for non-compliance though. And I'll use the example with a seatbelt. So if I go and drive a car, despite how annoying it is with the beeping, I can choose not to wear my seatbelt. But whilst that's my freedom to choose whether to wear a seatbelt or not, I'm not free from the consequences of not wearing a seatbelt. So what that means is if I get pulled over by the police and I'm found not to be wearing a seatbelt, in Australia, we've got demerit points. So if you accrue enough demerit points, you lose your license. There's also pretty serious fine. Like our seatbelt laws are really strict where you pretty much lose half your license and 500 bucks if you caught without a seatbelt. But then there's also the safety implication. So if we have an accident and you get hurt, you're kind of stuffed because the seatbelts are meant to prevent injury. But you're not, you're not free from the consequences of you taking that action but you still had the freedom to, to choose. And that's the problem here. It removes your freedom to choose whether you comply to the regulations or not. Now, if I was flying for commercial and going to go and film some real estate, I would want to comply to the regulations because if something happened, I would hazard a guess that insurance companies would require me to prove that I was complying to all the laws in order for them to pay my claim. But if I'm just gonna go fly at a park or a bando, and like when we go and fly for FPP for fun, we're trying to minimize the amount of attention we get. 
we we try and make sure that we're flying where we can't you know be approached and hassled by people so it's not like we're doing it to go and break the law we're, we're just trying to go and be left alone to do our thing and if we're trying to be left alone to do our thing we should have the freedom to choose whether or not we want to comply and it removes our freedom of choice so anyway let me know what you think in the comments below i'm darren ellett until next time don't forget to send it